Welcome to Forensic Perspectives, the legal community's online resource for the latest in forensic accounting, business valuation, and financial litigation support. Your host for this podcast is Mark Gottlieb. In addition to being a certified public accountant, Mark has also obtained many professional accreditations in forensic accounting and business valuation. As one of the Tri-State's leading financial experts, Mark is also a frequent lecturer and writer. Without any further ado, please welcome the host of Forensic Perspectives, Mark Gottlieb. Thank you, and welcome to today's program. On June 15, 2010, the state Senate approved legislation that would permit no-fault divorce after a marriage has been broken down for six months or more without the need to identify fault, such as adultery or abandonment. The package must still pass the State Assembly, which is considering two bills that would adopt some version of a no-fault divorce. It has been 40 years since the first no-fault divorce law was signed by then-Governor Ronald Reagan, and New York State is the last state to permit more accessible divorce. Proponents say that the legislation is needed to bring New York into line with the rest of the country. Senator Ruth Hassel Thompson said, Under New York State's current law, couples in deteriorating relationships are forced to assign blame or fault to validate the end of their marriage. By implementing a policy of no-fault divorce, this prolonged and often destructive process would be eliminated. Long-time opponents, such as the Catholic Church and the New York State chapter of the National Organization for Women, believe that the high rate of divorce in the United States is a direct result of no-fault divorce laws. In 2008, Judge Sandra Miller was a spokesperson for various state and local bar groups that lobbied Albany for the amendment to divorce law to permit no-fault divorce. The event was to remind legislatures of the need to change the divorce law and to highlight the support that the no-fault option has among various bar groups. That being said, I'd like to introduce our guest today, the Honorable Sandra Miller. Judge Miller was appointed to the Appellate Division of the Supreme Court Second Department by Governor Mario Cuomo in 1990, the first woman in the Ninth Judicial District to be so recognized. Since 2006, Judge Miller has been the Chief Counsel of McCarthy Fingar, a multidisciplinary law firm in White Plains, New York and leads the firm's appellate practice and mediation and arbitration groups. Judge Miller, welcome to Forensic Perspectives. Good morning. Judge Miller, why after 40 years of the no-fault divorce in this country, is this still such a hot issue for liberal groups, religious groups, and even members of the legal community? Oh, I'm so very, very pleased to be here today to be able to discuss this question. And your question really is a baffling one. It baffles many people. Why is it that New York is the only state in the United States that requires one party to prove marital fault to end a marriage in the absence of a formal agreement of separation? Why is that? And you mention that the opposition to this much-needed change in the law is really uh, significant. And I must tell you, I don't believe it really is significant in terms of numbers. Every single bar association in the state of New York has been seeking to effect this reform. And this reform is terribly important. It is a humanitarian reform that will benefit the families and the children of New York. Let me tell you a little bit about what the statute does. What is no-fault divorce? No-fault divorce requires one party to allege under oath that the marriage has broken down irretrievably for at least a period of six months. Based upon that sworn testimony, the court is authorized to grant a divorce. However, this is not divorce on demand, because no judgment of divorce shall be entered unless and until the economic issues of equitable distribution of marital property, the payment or waiver of spousal support, the payment of child support, the payment 
of counsel and expert fees and expenses, as well as the custody and visitation of infant children of the marriage have been resolved by the parties or determined by the court and incorporated into the judgment of divorce. So what this law does is simply takes out of the mix the bitterness, the anger, the hatred, and the lies that are the result of having a statute that requires that one party must charge the other with fault in order to get a divorce. You make it sound so simple the way you explained it that way and to give us almost like a ladder of events that have to be completed before you get to the issue of fault. That being said, why has this been such an uphill battle all these years and why is this so much resistance to this concept? It's a hard question to answer. It is a baffling question, as a baffling issue, as many of us know, because I have, as, as you have stated, I have served as a judge for 22 years on the bench, and I've also practiced matrimonial law. And today I devote myself to helping people avoid the courts by mediating their disputes, because the courts are not the best way for people to resolve their difficulties. But the question is, why hasn't this law been passed in New York, where it has been in effect in every other state in the country? And although bills have been produced over the years, there has been a very active lobby on the part of a small group of people who have diverted the attention of the legislature from the importance of this issue. Why is that? Well, it's understandable that the Catholic Conference would oppose this bill because, of course, the Catholic Church opposes divorce entirely. However, New York State has long ago uh, recognized that divorce is, is recognized and people can get divorced in New York. It's not a matter of whether or not people can get divorced. It's a matter of what they have to go through in order to get divorced. So I understand the Catholic Conference as a matter of principle, as a matter of religious conviction, uh, taking that position, even though we have many very actively active Catholic practitioners who tell me that uh, New York doesn't grant a divorce in the eyes of the church. Only the church can grant an annulment. This is a civil proceeding. And so many, many Catholic people seek divorces, civil divorces. The other opposition uh, to this legislation is even stranger, is stranger, because the Catholic conference is understandable. But the National Organization for Women, by the way, the National Organization for Women, and I have been a member for many, many years and have believed in much of the very important and good work of that organization. This is a surprise. It is a shock. Their opposition to this. Their opposition. Now, the New York City chapter of National Organization for Women supports no fault. The national organization, as I understand throughout the country, supports no fault. The only opposition to New York is the New York State National Organization of Women, which I understand consists of a relatively small number of people. However, they are extremely competent lobbyists. And as I understand it, and from what um, Assemblywoman Weinstein has verified for me, they are very active in Albany. And when I spoke before the Senate Judiciary Committee on this subject last month in May, they were there in large numbers and they were uh, submitting their own position papers while I was asked to speak. So they are always there, and they are effective. And why have they taken this position? In my view, they are severely misguided. Let's talk about it for a second. You started to explain that the fault issue is at the end of the process after all the financial and custody issues will be Resolved. Is that correct? There is no fault issue under the new legislation. Right, right. That's correct. But the no fault divorce concept requires that all the issues oh, in yes. regards to financial and custody are resolved first. Yes. Presently, though, without this bill being enacted, when someone gets divorced, is the fault 
issue, the first hurdle that has to be resolved? It doesn't have to be resolved, but the courts frequently seek, at least here in Westchester now, every time there is a fault issue raised, uh, there is a, a contested divorce case based upon fault, that issue is tried immediately. And as I understand it, you may be interested to know, it's very hard to prove fault under the laws of the state of New York. Because you have to prove either adultery, cruel and inhuman treatment, abandonment or constructive abandonment, or imprisonment for a period of years. Now, it's ve- we just had a very interesting case, a case that was reported in the Law Journal. Uh, I don't have the citation, but I can get it for you, where abandonment was the claim. And the trial judge said, look, I heard the plaintiff testify that uh, he had demanded sex for a period of ten year, uh, for a period of a year, and been not and been denied it, and the defendant took the opposite position and said that isn't so, and the judge said I believe the plaintiff, and I believe the defendant, so therefore I denied the divorce. Now, advocates of the no fault divorce concept. One of the things that they have repeatedly said to support their position is that there's a tremendous amount of time, money, and emotion wasted on the issue of fault. And they also say that the effect on the children in a marriage is really um, one of the paramount issues that the fault issue affects. Do you think that's true? And how do you think that children living in New York State whose parents are getting divorced, how do you think that they will be affected by this? All of those uh, contentions are true. Fault divorces are very expensive. In 2007, 60,756 divorces were filed in New York. Slightly less than 25% were contested. 7 to 10% of the contested cases involve the issue of fault. Fault litigation frequently results in a heavy financial burden on the parties in the form of attorney's fees and litigation fees. And it's interesting that the Bar Association, which has been urging the enactment of no-fault divorce, is really urging this at their own financial expense because lawyers make a lot of money in litigating fault cases. They are extremely expensive Often juries are required to spend significant amounts of time hearing evidence related to marital faults. In addition, the standards for establishing various grounds, especially cruel and inhuman treatment and abandonment, are vague and inexact. The longer the term of the marriage, the more difficult it is to prove fault. And in a vindictive party can often extract financial and custodial concessions in a separation agreement due to the expense and uncertainty of proving faults. 